the two places where I feel most free aren't actually places; they're moments. The first is inside of dance, somewhere between rising up against gravity and the feeling that the air beneath me is falling in love with my body's weight. I'm dancing, and the air is carrying me, like I might never come down. The second place that I feel free is after scoring a goal on the soccer pitch. My <laughs> my body floods with the chemical that they put inside of epipens to revive the dead, and I am weightless, raceless. My story is this. I'm a curator at a contemporary art center, but I don't really believe in art that doesn't bleed, or sweat, or cry. I imagine that my kids are going to live in a time when the most valuable commodities are fresh water and empathy. I love pretty dances and majestic sculpture as much as the next guy, but give me something else to go with it. Lift me up with the aesthetic sublime, and give me a practice or some tools to turn that inspiration into understanding and action. For instance, I'm a theater maker who loves sports. When I was making my latest piece, Pelota, I thought a lot about how soccer was a means for my own immigrant family to foster a sense of continuity and normality and community within the new context of the U.S. In this heightened moment of xenophobia and assault on immigrant identity, I wanted to think through how the game could serve as an affirmational tool for first-generation Americans and immigrant kids, to ask them to consider movement patterns on the field as kin to migratory patterns across social and political borders. Whether footballers or not, immigrants in the U.S. play on endangered ground. I wanted to help the kids understand that the same muscle that they use to plan the next goal can also be used to navigate the next block. For me, freedom exists in the body. We talk about it abstractly and even divisively, like protect our freedom, build this wall. They hate us because of our freedom. We have all these systems that are beautifully designed to incarcerate us or deport us, but how do we design freedom? For these kids, I wanted to track the idea back to something that exists inside that no one could take away. So I developed this curriculum that's part poli sci class, part soccer tournament, inside of an arts festival. Uh, it accesses Pelota's field of inquiry to create a sports-based political action for young people. The project is called Moving and Passing. It intersects curriculum development, site-specific performance, and the politics of joy, while using soccer as a metaphor for the urgent question of enfranchisement among immigrant youth. Imagine that you are a 15-year-old kid from Honduras now living in Harlem, or you're a 13-year-old girl born in D.C. to two Nigerian immigrants. You love the game. You're on the field with your folks. You've just been practicing dribbling through cones for like 15 minutes, and then all of a sudden, a marching band comes down the field. I want to associate the joy of the game with the exuberance of culture to locate the site. Of、um, joy in the game, at the same physical coordinate as being politically informed by art, a grass-laden theater for liberation. We spend a week looking at how the midfielder would explain Black Lives Matter, or how the goalkeeper would explain gun control, or how a defender's style is the perfect metaphor for the limits of American exceptionalism. As we study positions on the field, we also name and imagine our own freedoms. I don't know, man. Soccer is like the only thing on this planet that we can all agree to do together. <laughs> you know, it's like the official sport of this spinning ball. I want to be able to connect the joy of the game to the ever-moving footballer. To connect that moving footballer to immigrants 
who also moved in sight of a better position. Among these kids, I want to connect their families' histories to the bliss of a goal scorer's run. Family like that feeling after the ball beats the goalie, the closest thing going to freedom. Thank you.